I have no idea. Hi. Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, parents, just to let you know, um, I think I've talked about it before, but this is our class for um, kids that are not in the Eastern time zone. Um, but tomorrow, if you want to continue doing a class on our YouTube channel, my preschool class is pretty much a lot like this. This is using my kindergarten week one, where that's using my preschool week 20. So some of that stuff is actually a little more difficult than what I'm doing in kindergarten week one. So um, feel free to go use that um, next week. You can go to YouTube, The Reading Corner. We are gonna get started. If you want your child to make words along with me, we're gonna do a quick making words activity. I'm gonna kind of keep this open a little bit. Um, and you can just make those on little like half pieces of paper or whatever. But if you don't feel like making them, we're gonna still make them. Um, this is actually from the preschool curriculum. So I wanted to show you a couple of things that we are doing this week in that curriculum as well. I try to do different things in both times all week so that if you guys do go and use, um, take advantage of those other classes that they're not the same. And then this is what we're going to be using. We're going to play another kind of um, sight word game. So this is the, I put more words and kind of different words, but this is the activity we're, we're going to pick from. So I'm going to show you how you can make it more of like an interactive kind of game. But let's get started. Are you guys ready? Have you had a great day? All right. So we're going to start, of course, by practicing our two letter phonograms. I know we talked, I think it was with you guys that we talked about those extra um, two letter phonograms, the k and the n. I feel like that was in yesterday's class, but regardless, we added them to our phonograms today. So we're gonna quickly start with our I say, you say. I'm actually gonna do the letters as well because I feel like we don't do those a lot in this class. All right, so let's start with these ones. Ready? 
I say a a a. You say. Okay, that's your turn to try it. I say mm. You say. I say w w. You say. I say mm. You say. I say, mm, you say, I say, s, z, you say, I say, t, you say, I say, g, j, you can't really see on that side. I say, g, j. And remember, when you say those letters, don't say, g, j, say, g, J, make it really short. Okay, let's try that again. I say g, j. You say. I say. You say. I say. You say. Good job, guys. I say e, e, like your e, e neck and your n, n, e. You say. I say, which one is this? Think about it. It's got the line first and it makes a belly. So I say, b. You say, I say, you say, like fangs, right? All right, so we're going to get moving on to our two letter phonograms. Ready? I say, I want tickles. You say, okay, this is one of those new ones. You kind of crunch up your nose. It says, I say, mmm. You say, good. I say, k. Two letters. You say, I say, sh. You say, I say, e. You say, I say, ch, k, sh. You say, I say er like in first. You say, I say oi. You say, I say oo, uh. You say, I say ow, o. Oh. You say, I say r. You say, I say a. You say, all right, great job. Okay, so yesterday we played a sight word game. I think you guys beat me. I don't really remember, but we're gonna play a different one today. And this is a really easy thing that I've been doing since I started the school, what, 10 years ago? And it's just called Find That. So instead of using flashcards, we put them all on a piece of paper, we might like spread them around the room, and we simply just say, find the, and then we say the letter or the sight word, depending on which one we're doing. Um, you can use dabbers, you can use stickers and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can also, which makes it a little more challenging, you can, um, I gotta mix these up. You can cover a word, like if I say find the word like, then you would cover it with a post-it and then you would try to write it. So that's kind of what the activity is in the kindergarten week two right now. What it's meant to be is you're gonna look for it, you're gonna cover it, and you're gonna see if you can write it. And remember we talked about that so many times, you guys, that when I look at my trickster words, I look at it, like I'm gonna take a picture of it, click, I take a picture and then I close my eyes and I think of the, like I see the picture in my brain. And then the nice thing about the way we teach sight words is a lot of times there's a little jingle that goes with it. So it might say L-I-K-E, like, or T-H-E says that. So if you want to, you can, oh, I'm falling. You can write these after your team gets one. I'm not gonna write them today, but what we're gonna do is I am going to give you guys a blue dot if you get it, and I get a red dot if I get it, okay? Meaning like, well, you'll see when we play. All right, so I'm gonna pick from my pile first. I'll pick from yours first today. What is this word? Not, do you see the word not? 
So I'm going to give you a blue point. I kind of like playing tic-tac-toe a little bit. Okay, my turn. What's this word? T-H-E says the. Yep, that's mine. I'm going to give myself a little red dot. Okay, your turn. What's this word? A and D and 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 and. Do you see it? Find the word and. Okay. Give you guys a blue dot. What's this word? I made it in yellow. It might be kind of hard. Y O U says you. Okay, that's mine. Do you see it? Give myself. Okay, your turn. <gasps> Same one. What is that word? Y O U says you. So now we both. I've covered up that and it's going to get more tricky because we um have some extras in here some doubles okay this is my turn <gasps> just like i said what's this word y o u says you so i can't put a dot because i've already gotten that one so you guys are a little ahead of me what's this one t h e says the yep do you see the word all right put it up here What's that word? T-H-E says the, oh, I already had that covered. So I'm two down now. I got to catch up. What's this word? L-I-T-T-L-E. You see it? Okay, good. Okay. Oh, what's that word? Little again. So now I got to put it on mine. What's this word? Remember this one goes W-E-N-T. Do you see it? Yep, so you guys get a blue dot here. So you guys only have, how many more words do you guys have to um, get a dot on to win the game? Do you see? Play and like. Let's see what I get. A and D and 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 and. Okay. So you can tell we all, we both have these ones filled, but you guys have two extras. So I hope you start getting some doubles, sorry. What's this word? L-I-K-E, like, that means you get your point. What's this word? W-E-N-T, oh my goodness, it's getting close. You still are two ahead of me. What's this word? Aw, oh, man, play, which means you guys got all your points. Okay, I'm going to say the words, and I want you to tell me what those words are, okay? L-I-K-E, like, T-H-E, the, play, L-I-T-T-L-E, little, A-N-D, and Y O U U W E went and not because there's it's like a not. All right, great job, you guys. So that's another fun game that you guys can play. And then really, we're just trying to show you that we love playing games. And sight words and letters are really supposed to be played in a game style for kids to learn them. Paired with those jingles is how like the kids at our school really get them going. All right, so this is kind of that sentence activity. And my kids in my class love this. And the reason is because I try to really make sure that most of the words in here are going to be these sight words. So it's kind of a really great, like if you're just about out of like repetitive text reading and you're about to just go into books that are all different words, this is a really great like stepping stone into those books because there's a lot of repetitive words, but they're all mixed up. Um, another way to do this is if you go on our website and you look at our flip and reads, um, the reason I love our flip and reads, and I did an activity in our 1030 class with them yet today. And the reason I love them is because a lot of times kids get used to reading the story like over and over when it's repetitive text. The great thing about flip and reads is you can take them all apart and put them back together and then there's a different sentence strand on every page, okay? So let's get started. We've got our sight words again. So this is A-N-D, and. 
So my kids, we like to use crayons. Like I got the big ones. They're so cool. Cause I really like to kind of like color them in because then my brain knows that when it sees a red word, that it's going to be the word and. So I want you to take a second and I want you to see if you see any of the word and. I only see one, you guys. Do you see that word? Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer for you. I really want you to be able to see these words. So I'm getting really close to you. All right, it's right here. So I just kind of like to color it in. So I know that, that is my red word, and. Okay, what's the next word we're gonna look at? Play. Okay, take a second. There is one, two words play in these sentences. Can you find them? Here's one. Here's two. Good job. What's the next word? L-I-K-E, like. Okay, start looking. Don't get tricked because there's a lot of little as well. So there's two likes. Can you find them? One. Kind of like a coloring game too. Two. So you see how it's going to make it easier when we read the sentences because now they're kind of color coded, code, um, color coded or coordinated. I don't know which word I'm trying to say. All right. What's our next word? Oh, you know what? That was supposed to be purple. I'm sorry, guys. Um, what's our next word in orange? Y O U says you. I see one, two, three, four. Can you find all four of them? Okay, I see one here. One. Two, excuse me. Two. Oh, I think I have another one. Yep, there's actually five, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can go over that blue a little bit and make it more purple. It kind of defeats the purpose of this activity if it's the wrong color. Does that make, make it look more purple? Okay, the next word is pink and it's gonna be the word C. I see one, two, two of them. <gasps> I wonder if you guys caught something. I'm gonna see if you caught it because I missed one of our sight words, but first find the word C. Yeah, these crayons don't have a pink. Okay, I'm gonna have to write it really light. Kind of make it like a pink. One, two. But listen, I just found another one of those. Do you see where I messed up and I found there's another A, N, D, and, 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 and. Over here. Okay, and the last word is the word do. We talked about this one a little bit today because do and to rhyme. So when you have rhyming words, it's easy to know how to spell them because they sound the same at the end. But they're really not that tricky of words because you can hear the sounds d, oo, and t, oo. So we've talked about those tricksters having that party. I don't think they've ever made it to the party honestly, because they're just not that difficult. The only thing that I do see you guys getting tricked is you want to put a U instead of an O. So it does kind of trick you, I guess. All right, the last word is the word do, and it's going to be blue. You see the word do. So we got one, two, Three. Oh my gosh, I bet this is going to have the next. Four. Do you see any more? Five. And look, this one's kind of silly. This is what my kids love to do. <clears throat> if they see a, a sight word within 
Another one, they like to circle it. So I see it in the word dolls and I see it in the word dog. Okay, now what you can do with the extra colors like the gray and the black is you can put extra words up here. Like I have a brown. So if I wanted to, I could make all the words the brown and color those in. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to try to read these sentences. And if you haven't heard about the book chart yet, the book chart is like actually my favorite part of all of our curriculum. Because what we do is we have a book chart pretty much at the end of every package that we have. And every time you do an activity, you get to put a sticker on your book chart. And if you get to a goal, like if your moms and dads decide that like at the end of the first line, um, if you get to that, you might get extra like iPad time. Or um, sometimes I used to have like goodies in a little basket on the top of my refrigerator. So the nice thing about something like this is if you're collecting those literacy stories or if you went on the website and you printed some of the literacy stories up, it's almost like you have a booklet full of stories that you can read to get on your book chart. And my kids always add this as well because it's just a really great reading activity. So let's see if we can read this, okay? I'm going to let you try to read it first and then we're going to go ahead and read it together. Try it. So you mo you've seen most of those at this point. The only word you haven't seen is the word duck. What word is that? Duck. All right, let's read it. Do you see the little duck? All right, try to read this one. You've seen most of these words. And look, there's the word duck again. Let's read it together. I like the little duck and dog. Try to read the next one. The only two words you might not know is the word d all, doll or dolls, and blox. Blox, okay. Do you play dolls and blocks? Try to read the next one. Do you like to play with the toys? Let's read the last one together. You do not see me, do you? All right, so parents, again, um, the easiest place to find the curriculum, um, for, unfortunately for kindergarten, I didn't do it this week, but starting, Saturday, all the curriculum is going to be ready. You're going to go on to Access Library, Karen's Weekly Picks, and you're going to click on Elementary, and it's going to be right there for you. I think there's an elementary in there. If not, I'll put it in the preschool. But if you have questions finding curriculum, um, just let me know. But also, always look on my stories. Um, this week it's going to be on Saturday because I want to try to get it all done before Easter. So look on my stories to figure out how to get preschool week. Oh, you know what? No. We're gonna use our spring curriculum next week. So we'll put that in the weekly picks and then we're gonna use all spring curriculum next week. So we're not gonna be on week three or week 20 of anything. So that'll be fun because I've got some really cute spring things. All right, so before we move to math with Miss Kim, we're just gonna do a couple making words. What phonogram is this? Er, like in first, good. What phonogram is that? I don't know if I can get you guys closer to me without messing everything up. Okay, I'm going to take myself kind of out of the picture. I'm going to get you guys right up there so you can see them. Okay, it kind of gets a little shiny. All right, and this one says, ow, oh, good. Can you make the word, guys, you can make the word first. It's a really big word, but look, I'm going to put my fingers. Er, st. Look at my fingers. Remember when there's two of them next to each other? That's where the phonogram is. So what sound do you hear first? In f, f, er. Which of these two letter phonograms is that going to be? S, er, f, er. First, and that's why we say er like in first, 
because it's the er that we find in the word first. Okay, great job. All right, let's make the word um let's make the word bow like you have a bow in your hair be very careful which one of these has a b -b belly yep that one's got the belly that one's got the diaper b and then which one of these says ow oh good job Let's just see how many words we can make with just this ow o. Oh. If we take the b away and we put an s, what word's that? So, if we take the s away and we put the word the h, what's that? How? Now, do you hear that? This says so. This says how. Ow. O. Oh. That's why we say ow, oh, when we do the two letter phonogram, because it makes two different sounds in different words. If we take that away and we put a C, what one's that? Cow. If we take the C away and we've got an N, what's that? Yep. Now, if we take that away and put an M, Mo. All right. Oh, we can even make another one. What's that? Low. Oh my goodness. Toe. Row. So many different words. All right, I'm gonna back you guys back up. All right, so we did our sentences, we did some making words, we did our phonograms. You guys got a lot done. We're gonna move on to Miss Kim to do our math, and then you're gonna come back to me to do our handwriting and our writer's workshop, all right? Before we get with Miss Kim, let's take a little break, okay? Everybody stand up. Let's see, y'all stand up. You just stretch your hands really, really tall. We try to touch the ceiling when we do this. Oh, it feels so good. Okay, you're gonna to lean to the left. You're gonna to lean to the right. You're gonna to touch your toes. Go down and touch your toes. And wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay, sit down. All right, everybody say good morning, Miss Kim. Hi, friends. Good morning. All right, let's start off by singing our hello song really quick. Hello, friends. How are you? Hello, friends. And how do you do? Air high five. Hi friends, I'm so happy to see you all today. We are going to start off our math with doing some subtraction, okay? All right, so we have some dots here, all right? Now when we subtract, we are taking away, okay? Um, and a subtraction sign looks like this. It's a dash. That can be called a subtraction sign. It can also be called a minus sign. Okay, when we subtract, we are taking away, all right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six orange dots, okay? I'm gonna write a six right here. A line and a loop, six rolls a hoop. I'm in. okay? Now, six minus two equals one. Okay, all right, we have to figure that out, okay? So we have our six orange dots and we need to minus two. We can also say take away two. So in order to show that we're taking away, we're gonna put X's on two of the dots. <coughs> Pardon me, friends. All right, let's take away two. One, two. All right. Those two X's show that we're taking away two dots, okay? How many dots are left over? Let's count. One, two, three, four. All right, I'm gonna write the number four. That's my answer, that's the difference. Down and across and down once more. That's the way to make a four. All right, let's read the number sentence together. Here we go. Six 
minus two equals four. You can also say six take away two equals four. All right, great job. Now, we have this row of green dots. Let's go ahead and count those together. All right, get your math counting finger ready. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. All right, here we go. Fat old five goes down and around, put a flag on top. And look what you found, okay? Now, five take away, let's take away three. Let's take away three. All right. So I'm gonna take away three of my dots. And in order to do that, all right, I can put a big X. So take away one, take away two, take away three. How many are left over? One, two. All right, two is our answer, two is our difference. All right, let's read our number sentence together. Here we go. Five minus three equals two. We can read it a different way too. Five minus three equals two. All right, friends. Now, we're gonna try the purple dots now. Let's count and see how many. Get your math counting finger ready. Here we go. One, two, three, four. All right. Down and across and down once more. That's the way to make a four. All right, we have four dots. And now we need to take away, let's take away four dots and see how many are left over. All right, four minus four, all right, or four take away four. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take away four by marking an X. One, two, three, four. How many purple dots are left? Zero. Zero is a number that means nothing, all right? So let's read this number sentence together. Four minus four equals zero. We can also read it. Four take away four equals zero. Ah, oh, you're really getting the hang of this subtraction stuff. Really proud of you. All right, let's count and see how many pink dots we have. Here we go. One, two, three. All right. Around a tree, around a tree. That's the way to make a three. Three take away. Hmm, let's take away one. All right. All right, I'm gonna take away one pink dot and I'm gonna find out how many are left. Here we go. One, two. All right, let's read our subtraction number sentence together. Here we go. Three minus one equals two. We can also say three take away one equals two. All right, friends, you are so smart. You're subtraction experts. All right, hmm, let's see. How are we gonna celebrate? You know what? Let's do a hip, hip, hooray. Here we go. Hip, hip, hooray. One more time, because you guys are mathematicians. Hip, hip, hooray. All right, great job. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do number of the day. I'm gonna flip the easel around, all right? And we're gonna do the number of the day. All right, here we go. I hope you, everybody can see this. All right, let's see. We're gonna do our number of the day, pardon me. Our number of the day is 13. Our number of the day is 13. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna count all the way to 13. And we're gonna use this handy dandy tool called the number line to help us count to 13. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Bravo, nice job, friends. 
Now let's try to count backwards. Do you think you're up for the challenge? Ah, I thought you would be. Here we go. Let's start at 13 and we're gonna count backwards all the way. Let's do all the way to zero. All right, here we go, ready? 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Blast off. Nice job counting backwards, friends. All right. So we are going to, we are going to draw in or count out 13 dots. All right, here we go. Now, what is this handy dandy tool called that we use in math? A 10 frame, you're absolutely right. When we use a 10 frame, we're gonna start all the way at the, the top left. Here we go, let's fill it in. One, two, three, four, five. I can't go over to this next 10 frame. I have to fill up this one first. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, now I can move over to this other 10 frame. Now, I have to go back up to the top left, 11, 12, 13. All right, let's, double, let's count and double check that we have 13 dots there. Get your mouth counting finger ready. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Bravo, friends. Now, we're gonna find out how many tens and how many ones are in the number 13, okay? We do that by looking at the 10 frame, okay? <clears throat> There's one 10 frame that's completely filled up. So that, mean, there, that means we have one 10 in the number 13. Now, let's see how many ones there are. One, two, three. In the number 13, we have one 10 and three ones. All right, we're doing great. Now we're gonna move on to tallies. Do you remember that little song that we know that I taught you about tallies? Okay, a tally is just a stick, just a stick. A tally is just a stick, just a stick. When you see a bundle, it tells you to count by fives. A tally is just a stick, just a stick. All right, here we go. So we're gonna do 13 tallies, here we go. One, one, two, three, four, five, slash, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, slash, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, so I see some bundles there that tells my brain that I need to count by fives and double check that I have thirteen. Here we go. Math counting finger ready. Five. 10, counting on by ones from 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 tallies. That was way easier than counting all of those tallies by ones. So when you see that bundle, that tells your brain that you can count by fives. All right, on that note, let's just pause here and let's take a brain break, okay? Now, I'm going to remain seated so you can see me, but you can go ahead and stand up. We're going to raise the roof counting by tens, okay? And we're going to go all the way to 100. When we get to 100, okay, you get to celebrate by going whoop, whoop. All right, here we go. All right, counting by tens, raising the roof, counting by tens all the way to 100. Here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 90, 100. Now everybody celebrate. Whoop, 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 whoop. Nice job. All right, ready? Now, hmm, another brain break. Okay, now we're going to count by fives all the way to 100, okay? And we are going to do shoulder taps, okay? But go ahead and stand up. Okay, and do your shoulder taps. Here we go, ready? Counting by fives all the way to 100. All right, and then when we get to 100, we'll celebrate by saying yee-haw. Here we go, ready? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 
75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Yeah, ha! That was great counting by fives, friends. Well done. Okay, nice brainiac break. Here we go. All right. Now, I'm going to put the number 13 up here, but I'm also going to put three other numbers. And then I'm going to ask you a very important question. Seven, six, five. Okay. Six, 13, seven, five. Which number is the least? Least is just a fancy word for the smallest. Which number is the least or the smallest? Okay. Now, that would be the number that comes first when you count all of these numbers. Or you can use the number line to help you. Circle 13, circle 7, circle 6, and circle 5. Which one is the least? It would be the number that comes before all the other numbers on the number line. Five, you're right. Five is the least of these numbers. Six, 13, seven, five. Well done, smart thinking. All right, well. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to circle our number of the day. Does anybody remember what this special tool is, math tool is called? A number line, you're exactly right. We're gonna circle the number 13, okay? And we're gonna find out what one more than 13 is, which you can just do 13 plus, that's just like saying 13 plus one, okay? When you find out what one more is and you use the number line to help you, it's just the number that comes after 13. Jump forward on your number line, 14. One more than 13 is 14. All right, now, if we're, oh, here's this word less again. If we're saying what's one less than 13, that's just like saying 13 minus one, okay? All right, let's find, we have 13 on our number line. That's just the number that comes before 13. So we're gonna jump backwards on the other number line, 13, the number that is less, one less than 13 is 12. Friends, that's just like saying 13 minus one equals 12. All right, ready? Now we're gonna do the ordinal number for 13, which is 13th. All right, we're gonna sing our little song. Who, oh, who is 13th in line? Oh, who, oh, who can it be? Who, oh, who is 13th in line? Let's count and we shall see. Wonder what color is 13th in line? Here we go. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth. P green is 13th in line. Yes, P green is 13th in line. P green is 13th in line. We found out. All right. And move this forward. I hope you can see everything, friends. All right, ready? So, um, I have a number bond here, okay? My number of the day is 13. So that's, I have, 13 will be my hole in my number bond, okay? Let's see, let's pick a number that's less than 13. Hmm, I don't know, 12, okay? So part of 13 is 12. What's the missing part? One, that's right. This is just like saying 12 plus one equals 13. You're doing great, friends. All right, I'm gonna keep my number of the day because there's many ways um, to make addition number sentences for 13. All right, let's see. Hmm, what's a number less than 13? 10, I like it. Okay, so I need the other part for 13. I have 10. How many more will give me 13? Keep 10 in your head, count on to 13. 11, 
12, 13. 10 and 3 will give you 13. That's just like saying 10 plus 3 equals 13. Okay, great. All right, let's see how many other addition sentences we can come up with. Uh-oh, I erased my 13. Hmm, what's a number less than 13? Oh. All right, okay, let's do nine. All right, ready? We're missing the, we have one part, which is nine. We're missing the other part that would help us get 13. Put nine in your head and count on to 13 on your fingers. 10, 11, 12, 13. Nine and four make 13. That's just like saying nine plus four equals 13. All right, one more addition number sentence. Let's see. Pick a number that's less than 13. Hmm. Oh, okay. All right, let's do six. All right. You're going to put six in your head and count on your fingers to 13 to find the missing part. Ready? Here we go. Keep six in your head, count on to 13. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yes, the missing part is seven. That's just like saying six plus seven equals 13. Oh, you're doing great crimes. All right, ready? Now, we are going to do, oh, even or odd. I forgot about this the other day. All right, remember, even and Stephen is all, even Stephen is always paired up with a friend. An odd Todd is the odd man out. He is not paired up with a friend, okay? So we're gonna count out 13 dots, okay? And we're gonna pair up each one with a friend as we count. Here we go, ready? All right, let's see if 13 is an even Stephen or an odd Todd. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Does dot number 13, does it have a friend? No, then it's not an even Steven. It's an odd Todd because 13 is the odd man out. He doesn't have a friend. So 13 is odd. Oh, goodness, my brain feels great. I'm doing so much amazing math work today. All right, ready? Okay, I think, let me take a look at our board. I think we're about done. I think so. All right, friends, you did great math today. I am so, so very proud of you. Hmm, this deserves a cheer. Oh, you know what we're gonna do? Let's do fantastic. Get your spray bottle, okay? Psst, psst, psst. Fantastic. Nice job. Okay, don't forget, all right? You are kind, uh, you are smart, and you are important. Love you, friends. So great seeing you on here today. Bye. All right, there's always a little pause because I echo if I talk for that. Thank you, Ms. Kim. I love seeing you. This is the only time I get to see her right now. Um, all right, so guys, we are almost done, but we've got our very important thing to do, our handwriting and our writing. So I want you to get a piece of paper out, even if you don't have the handwriting paper that we have. And I love seeing that you guys, I saw all of you working so hard when Ms. Kim was doing her number of the day. You're working really hard. Okay. I'm going to say the, the number, the letter, and then you're going to do it after me, okay? And we're going to do three of each one. My turn. I say, little hook down, come up and make a dash. You do it. Little hook down, come up and make a dash. Do you know the part that I forgot to say? I forgot to say, touch the... Bottom line. It's so important to touch that bottom line because most of your letters go like, like they're flying in outer space. So let's try another one. Little hook down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a dash. You try it. 
Little hook down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a dash. Okay, one more. Little hook down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a dash. You try it. Little hook down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a dash. Okay, circle your best one. All right, let's move to our E's. Remember, we don't want our E's looking like this. It's got a nice straight line. Ready? Straight line, up and around, touch the bottom line. Now you try it. Straight line, up and around, touch the bottom line. Let's do another one. Straight line, up and around, touch the bottom line. You try. Straight line, up and around, touch the bottom line. Okay, one more. Oh, I don't think either of mine are that great. I hope I do my next one really good. Let's try it. Straight line, up and around, touch the bottom line. Now you try it. Straight line, up and around, touch the bottom line. Awesome. Okay, circle your best one. My last one was my best. I don't try to rush it. I'd rather do three really, really good ones than like 10 sloppy ones. All right, let's do the letter G. Just like, well, let's do the A first and then we'll move into the G, G so you can see how close they are together. Where do we start when we start our A? Start at two o'clock. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Now you try it. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Okay, my turn. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Ooh, that was a good one. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to beat it. You try it. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Okay, let's see if I can do a better one. Ready? Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Mm. I like it because it's a little bit fatter of an O and it's not like super skinny like that. Sometimes people do them that way. You try it. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down. Okay, which one was your best? Okay, I like my last one. It looks like third time's a charm with me because I'm practicing it and I get it the best by the last one. Is that what you guys are doing or do you find that your first or second one is the best? Okay, let's try the G because the G is just like the A except you're coming down and making a hook. Watch. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down, make a hook. See that? Not making anything different. It looks just like an A except we make the hook. But that's so important to touch the bottom line because sometimes you guys make them like this. And they're like flying. Okay, you try it. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down, make a hook. Okay, let's see. My first one wasn't that great. Let's see if I can do a better one. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down, make a hook. That's pretty good. You try it. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down, make a hook. Do you guys have a really good one yet? Are you making sure it's touching the bottom line? Let's try one more, it's my turn first. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, make a hook. Ah, my third one wasn't that great. You try to be, make one better than me. Start at two o'clock, touch the bottom line, straight line down, make a hook. Okay, which one was your best? All right. We're gonna try our H, and then we're gonna go to a B, and then maybe we'll go to a P, because they're all ones that have either a hump going this way or a belly going this way. Let's try our H. It's a nice tall line, straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hook, a hump, sorry. Okay, you try it, nice straight line. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump. Okay, my turn. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a hump. Ooh, let me show you something, guys. Pause for a second. This is what I see a lot, and I kind of did it already. A lot of times when you guys make an H, you go like this, and then you go like this. Do you see how there's like this gap right here? 
you want to make sure that when you make that straight line, you go right back up that line to come up and make the hump. See that? Do you see the difference? Whereas this one's kind of going out and it's got all this space right here. This one is nice and clean because it's going all the way up on the straight line. So watch me again. Start it straight line down, touch the bottom line, come back up and make a hump. Okay, you try that. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come back up and make your hump. Did you make it without that little C look? I have it in both of them right there. Okay, let me do one more. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come back up and make a hump. You guys try it. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come back up and make a hump. Okay, which one's your best? I don't know. I don't really love any of mine, but I think I'm gonna do my first one. All right, now we're gonna make the B, because the B is just the same as the, uh, the H, except instead of making a hump, we're making a belly, right? Or a hump, instead, instead of a hump, we're making a bump. Let's try it. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a belly. You try it. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come back up and make a belly. So don't lift your pencil. Watch me again. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a belly. I don't know. My bellies are looking a little small. Like I like a big circle. So try to make your circle. See how I could have kind of made that a little bit better? Try to make your circle like that. Try it. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a belly. All right. I'm going to try to do it better. Let's see. Straight line down, touch the bottom line, come up and make a belly. That was a little better. Okay, circle your best one. Let's move on to writer's workshop. What is the thing that I put on my paper the first thing? Name on my paper, first thing. Do you guys know what my name is? It's Miss Karen. You have Miss Karen and you have Miss Kim. All right. Let's see. So we did our morning classes. And then Mr. Andy had to run to the post office. So we decided to all go. We didn't go inside, but we went in the car. And then we went to Culver's. It was like a big thing where that used to be like something, one of 80 things we did in a day. That was our big event for the day. So I'm going to write about it. So sometimes when I write about two things, I cut my paper in half. So it's like I'm telling the first part of my story here. And then I'm telling the second part of my story here. So I'm just gonna do it really quickly. This is the first building. I'm not very good at drawing. Here's the car. Okay, and I'm gonna put a P and an O for post office, okay? And this is my second one. I'm gonna put a C. Here's my car. All right, so do you remember that we made that word er like in first? That's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say, first, we went to the post office. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of words. Can you help me clap it? First, we went to the post office. Okay, let's make our dashes. First, we went, W-E-N-T, we saw that today, to, we talked about to and do today. First, we went to the, T-H-E says the, post office. Do you remember we had, we talked about yesterday that good writers sound out scary words and they also make the words. So I remember that I made the word first back here and I'm gonna make it really quick again. Okay, what sound did you hear at the beginning of the word first? <laughs> yep, it's got an, uh, an F. And now it's got that er like in 
first. And then it's f er s t t t t t. So guys, I made I did the work already earlier. I sounded out the word. I don't want to do it again. So now I can look at that and I can just swipe it. Okay, ready? There's one thing I need to change though. This is a lowercase f, and I know that when I start a sentence, the very first letter is a capital letter. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna kind of cap, okay, I got my, I'm gonna swipe it. F, I, R, S, T. It was just too long to try to like get a picture of it like we usually do, and I'm gonna underline that er. First, we, do you remember we talked about this, the W? And it goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. I'm gonna make a really clean E. First, we went. Hmm. I feel like I've seen that word somewhere that I can swipe it. Do you see where I can swipe that word? It's on our work wall. It says W-E-N-T. It was also in the game we played today. And we practice some of those letters in our handwriting. Do you see how it all comes together? So I gotta really pay attention to my letters. I have a picture of it in my head. I love that it's got a jingle, W-E-N-T. W, I'm gonna slow down, E-N-T. First we went to, okay. Now do you remember we talked about that this one's kind of easy because it just says t ooh. But remember I told you that most of the time you guys make a U for the U sound in there? And what is it supposed to be? T O. T O. I might need to add that to our word wall over there. Even though I said that they don't typically make it to the tip trickster party, I do remember that's why they're usually there, is because you guys put a T U instead of a T O. But it's not gonna trick us today, right? First, we went to the. Do you know how to spell the? Can you hear the jingle in your brain? T H E says the. I didn't even have to look at my word wall because I could remember that jingle. We went to the nice and neat letters post. Oh, it's a really big word. So I'm going to stretch it out. Ready? P o st. P o st. Oh, st. I hear four sounds. P, p, p. Oh, st. T, t, t. First, we went to the post office. That's a lot of scary, that's a big scary word, but it, good writers don't let words scare them, right? So I'm just gonna sound it out. I'm gonna stretch it out. Ah. Uh, off is off is I hear four off is okay doesn't look right I don't think that's how you spell office but I gave it my best try and that's all I can ask for and that's all I want you guys to do too but because I'm a teacher I'm gonna write really small up here, the right way to write office. Okay, and then if I had to have more time, you guys, I would write the second part of my story. What was the second part of my story? That's right, this is why we do a quick sketch. So we can remember what we wanted to write about. Because I remembered first I wanted to write about going to the post office, and then I wanted to write about going to Culver's. But man, I'm too tired to write another sentence today, so I'm so glad that I have that quick sketch, because now tomorrow, I can either write a new story or I can go back to my story and write about going to Culver's. I might even get a little crazy, you guys, and talk about what I got at Culver's. So good writers write more and more and more because when you're done, you've really just begun, meaning that you can write another sentence. All right, guys, you did such a great job. Remember, if you want to see me and maybe even some different teachers, you can go on our YouTube and you can... Look for, I would look for a week, day, oh my goodness, is this day nine, Andy? Uh, yes. So I would look for day 
seven and day eight. So I would do day seven tomorrow. Yeah, so wait till tomorrow because I'm not up yet. But boys and girls, I would do day seven tomorrow and I would do day eight on Monday and then I'll see you again on Tuesday. So you'll get lessons all of those days. I really hope the Easter Bunny comes to your house and brings you something special. I'm kind of excited about it in our house. So you guys have a really great weekend. Um, parents, I'm gonna have everything uploaded by Saturday. Look in my stories on Reading Corner Online to show you exactly where to put everything. But remember, we are doing our spring curriculum next week, which is super fun. So just, if you want to, you can just go ahead and print out kindergarten spring curriculum because that's what I'm gonna be using. All right, bye guys, have a great day.